Praise the Lord. I decided to come back outside again. It's for, <laughs> it looks like, oh, maybe five minutes. <laughs> Who knows? It's trying to rain again. And I'm going to have to clean up some of the things that I have on my porch so it doesn't get rained on. Have you ever noticed that if you give somebody enough rope, <laughs> they seem to hang themselves? If you give Christians enough liberty, they seem to get carried away. You know, one of the things I think people forget is we're not given freedom to go out and be free. We're given freedom to exercise restraint so that we would not go beyond the limits of what God has said to do. Because all things are lawful to me, but not all things are expedient. In other words, sure, I could go and do anything. Jesus paid the price. But at some point in time, you realize that, like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, you need to come to a place where it's not my will, but thy will. When I was dealing with someone today, they went out of their way to say, I command in the name. And I thought, you know, there's something wrong when you put the I in front of anything. When it's about me, or it's I say, or I speak, or I do. You know, it sounds like I dole, you know. If you can put, take the L off, you know, which is what you left out, and recognize that in idle there is I do. And the first thing in idle is I. I think you might want to kind of go like, you know, the Lord commands you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord change this. The Lord do this. Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord, not trust in your ability to make decisions based upon your own interpretation and understanding because, you know, it even says that the Lord commended himself to him who judges righteously. So, Jesus, when he was here on earth, did not exercise his authority. Rather, he referred all authority to his Father. So you see, I don't know about you, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are kind of into this Pentecostal, you know, denominational thing that really think that they can command it in the name of Jesus, you know, or whatever it may be. And, you know, God bless them for their enthusiasm. God bless them for their great faith. But don't you think that maybe Satan laughs a little bit when somebody says, I command in the name of Jesus that you be gone or something. In. And uh, he kind of goes, hey, tell you what, I'm going to go, you know, and let them think that they got their way. So that way their pride is puffed up. That way I can come back with more of my demons, you know, and I can come back and sneak in the back door because they don't see me coming because they think they cast me out. So they got all this power and authority and I'm going to come back in and just slip in the back door when they ain't looking. I think maybe, you know, just maybe we ought to go by what Jesus did and what Jesus said and the way Jesus did things as opposed to <laughs> coming up with I, me, mine, and idols because, frankly, I don't think you can command anybody, you know. I mean, maybe you're, maybe you're a military commander. Maybe you're the president. You may be a, an ambassador. Or you may have been to England or France. You know, you might like to gamble and you might like to dance, but you're going to have to serve somebody. And frankly, when you command something, it doesn't sound like you're serving anything except yourself. When you say, I command, or I do, or I, 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 I would say, I, 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 I and head the other way, because I don't want to stand around whatever it is you're doing, because it's I. It's not we, it's not he, it's not him, and it's not Jesus. It's I. Okay. Good luck. If you really want to go there, you can stick with your eye, but I'll stick with him. The ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them.
but the transgressors shall fall therein. Unto you which believe he is precious, but unto them which be obedient, disobedient, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, then the whole body shall be full of light. But if any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God. If any man shall do his will, whether it be of the doctrine, or whether it be of God. In other words, whether it be man-made or God-directed. Whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. He that is of God hears God's word. You therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. You will not come unto me, that you might have life. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So you see, it's like if you if you know Jesus, you don't want to do it in the name of Jesus. You want to do it with Jesus, because in the name of Jesus, it's kind of like what Jesus warned about, like on Matthew, you know, I mean, Sermon on the Mount. Let's look at the very end of it. Have we not cast out demons in thy name? So you see, every time I hear someone say, in the name of Jesus, I cringe. Because I keep thinking, didn't they read Matthew? Didn't, didn't they, like, pay attention in Bible studies or Sunday school or something? Didn't they look at and see that if you're doing it in the name of something, you're not doing it with someone, you're doing it for someone. And if that someone didn't tell you to do it, they may not have wanted you to do it in the first place. So, why did you do it? And there is a time, you know, where, hey, you know, people will say, oh man, you know, we did all these marvelous things, you know, we built these mega churches, you know, we cast out demons, we raised the dead, we healed the sick, you know, we raised tons of money, you know, we even went overseas and there was thousands of people got saved. And Jesus will look at them and say, look, you know, I know you're telling me that you did this in my name, but do I know you? Do you know me? Did you hear my voice? Did you walk with me? Did you talk with me? Now, I understand that you want to ignore what I said when I was trying to talk to you and you just wanted to read and make it sound like this is my commandment and you could just do my commandments without ever talking to me or checking in and finding out that I'm alive. But, you know, that's not what I said. I said my sheep hear my voice and they know me not. My sheep read about me and go off and do what they think I said to do. I don't know, you know. Jesus is a lot easier to follow than most people think. The reason being is you just got to listen. You just got to do what he tells you to. Not what someone preaches at you and not what someone teaches at you. Or what your Lord, your only Lord that can save you, tells you to do. Which is why we trust him. Personally. The Everlasting Father. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. I and my Father are one. The Father is in me, and I in him. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. Philip says unto him, Well, Lord, show us the father, and it, it'll suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the father. Behold, I and the children which God hath given me, he shall see the travail of his soul, and he shall be satisfied. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, 
the Almighty. Before Abraham was, I am. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So, God, after Jesus had spent his entire life living at the will of the Father, led by the Spirit of God, while in the ministry, did only those things that were pleasing to his Father, did only those things by the will of God, did only those things by the power of the Holy Spirit leading him and telling him what to do, so that he could say at the end of his life, I only did those things I saw my Father doing. So he only imitated his Father, he only did at the direction of his Father. What will you do? Will you by misdirection choose to do things you think you should do or will you do those things that please the father which might not be these great works you think you have to do sometimes god might tell you just to sit still sometimes he might tell you you're overworking sometimes he just might tell you he loves you because the bottom line is he wants you to be in fellowship with him and if you don't start now you won't end there later it doesn't suddenly happen it's an ongoing process so today take a little time you know figure out whether or not it's you're being idle with your time or you're making an idol of yourself because if you can put the eye in anything you're doing for the Lord then you might not be doing it with the Lord and frankly, the Lord, our God, might have something to say about it.